usually we get around and see companies like Instagram or Flipboard, uh, consumer internet companies, but now we're gonna see Now.js, which is building real-time technology that other developers will build on. And we're gonna learn what that's all about right now. Who are you? I'm Darshan, CEO and founder of Flowtype, and uh, we build the real-time web technologies for uh, developers everywhere. And uh, my background, I was an engineer, uh, electrical engineering, computer science at, at UC Berkeley, uh, as well as my other founders. Yeah, so we're here in Berkeley, yep. right down the street from where you went to school. Yep. That's really cool. And you're a YC-funded company? Yep, we were Y Combinator you? for the previous batch. So tell me what, what real-time is used for and why your company is going to you know, do well now yeah. when it didn't do well five years ago. Yeah, so the real-time web technologies, it's kind of this abstract notion, and people have wanted to do it for, for a very long time. Uh, but there's an emergence of technologies these days like Node.js and WebSockets that, that really enable us to build this really cool technology to, to enable other developers and companies to build extremely cool products. Um, Give me an example of what I would do with real time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've seen like chat rooms and exactly. uh, FriendFeed came out with their tornado yep. technology, yep. which let me do real time commenting. Yep. What else? What, what are you seeing people do today? Yeah. So uh, we launched about three months ago. We launched a, a early preview of our technology, uh, a free version just for developers to use. And, and we've seen many different technologies, uh, many different products been made with this technology. Uh, ranging from something as simple as chat, um, something that used to be very complex is now very easy to build using Now.js. Um, you could be doing something like Facebook or something like Twitter very easily. You could build a clone um, quite quickly. Yeah. Uh, but other applications, uh, we can talk about real-time analytics, seeing who's visiting your website, what they're doing on your website in real time. You could be doing all sorts of financial dashboards if you're some sort of bank or someone in the financial industry. You could do any sort of, you know, anything where you have data that's changing, events that are occurring, and you want that to have some sort of result on client side, browsers, mobile phones, whatever it is. You want to basically show these changes happening on both sides, but you want it to happen in real time. And it's, it's possible to do these things before using existing technologies. It's just those technologies are antiquated and pretty old and it's just too hard to use. Uh, with Now.js, it's easy to use, it's scalable, and we're using next generation technologies, and we're providing this really stable, secure, reliable framework and infrastructure for you to use in production. Okay, so let's draw an architecture yeah. chart and sort of talk about real time. Yeah. I assume you're gonna have Linux at the bottom, right? Yeah, and yeah. You're so we're talking about slightly higher level abstractions. So let's start with the Linux boxes. And, yep. and yep. The, your technology is designed to scale out, so if you get a really hyper big hyper exactly. hot site like Zynga or something, yep. uh, you're probably gonna need 50,000 servers, right? Exactly, and exactly. And they might be abstracted a little bit, but yep. you're gonna have to have 50,000 Linux servers, right? Exactly. So yeah. start there and then explain going up what, yeah, what it yeah. looks like to a programmer. Um, so so let's, let's first draw what used to be the way we do things. Yeah. Um, so on one side, you have your clients. And these clients could be anything like iPhones, yeah. They could be Android devices, they could be laptops, yeah. any sort of browser or client. And on the other side, you have your servers. So this is your back end stuff where you have your, you know, you have your, all your different boxes, so server one, server two, server three, and these could be you know, in, in a data center, this could be in a data center across the, other, uh, across the globe. And then you'll have like your, you know, your databases, and then you'll have you know, more, more application level um, things over here. Yeah. But these two need to communicate with each other somehow. And existing technologies, you know, we could use Ajax, which is HTTPS is sending XML back. Yeah, and yeah. You could use JSON to you know package things, package the data, send it over both sides. We could be talking about SOAP-based stuff. We could be using long polling. What's long polling? Long polling is just a way to, to maintain a connection across both sides, keep polling for, for new changes on, on your server, and basically just get changes across the other side. Okay. Um, XHR, similar. Um, and the issue with these existing technologies 
they're hard to use and they're, they don't perform as well. So you've got emerging technologies that do a better job of this. Um, you've got lower level stuff like WebSockets. WebSockets makes things a lot easier, killing things like XHR and long polling. But on top of that, you, you could be using uh, you know, WebSockets right now. This is, we're talking about the future. As we start erasing stuff, we're not talking about the future, or, or rather the present, since now just is available. We could be using WebSockets, which are slowly being rolled out. Chrome supports WebSockets. Firefox is going to support WebSockets very soon. Um, and, and across all the other browsers, all iPhone, Android, everything supports WebSockets. It's a beautiful technology. And you've got other different stuff to enable it. But on top of everything, you have Now.js. Okay. And Now.js goes smack dab in the middle. And Now.js allows you to be using you know, existing technologies like WebSockets, XHR, long polling, um, flash sockets. Everything is, gets abstracted away. We pick and choose your transports based on what's needed, based on what's supported, based on what's best for you. And we use open source technology to help us do this. Uh, technology like Socket.io and, and Node.js helps us build some of our infrastructure. Okay. So digging a little bit deeper into what Now.js really does. Um, basically, you have here, as mentioned, your application data. And you have here your, your clients. You want a, a way to properly communicate with each other. So what we have done is, on your client side, you have this small piece of middleware. Um, and on your server side, you can have this small piece of middleware that basically allows communication to grow both ways. And this middleware is what enables you to create really cool applications, sending data back and forth really easily. Um, our API is, is structured such that it's just, it just makes sense. It's yeah. the way things should be if you were developing real-time applications. First, how, how much does this piece cost? How do I... Uh, in terms of pricing or yeah. performance? So yeah. in terms of pricing, uh, we basically have two products. We have a product called Now. Um, now is freely available. It's available on GitHub, on a variety of different sources. It's also on our website. And we have a product that we haven't talked so much about uh, we don't talk too much about it on our website uh, or our corporate website or anything yet, but it's a product called Now Cluster. Yeah. And Now Cluster is, is the business model behind this company. Okay. Now Cluster is an enterprise version of Now. Now Cluster scales to millions of concurrent users. It's reliable, it's scalable, fault tolerant. Um, we can dig in a bit to the technology in a little bit, but basically Now Cluster enables you to scale your application. So on this piece, you know, most of the new startups are mm -hmm. using cloud-based technologies yep. like Rackspace Cloud yep. or Amazon, you know, um, and you know, you just open up your iPad and start exactly build fifteen Linux servers and yep. put everything on there. Do you guys work on that? Yeah, we we work we work great. So I don't on that. need to have my own box and a data center. Exactly, or exactly. Yeah. We we are infrastructure. So you can use this software, purchase or use the free software, and put it on anything you want. If you're a Zynga with your private Z cloud, it'll work there. If you're on AWS, it'll work there. If you're on Rackspace, it'll work there. Um, even if it's your server in the back of your garage, it'll work there. Um, the Now Cluster technology as well. You, know, you fire up all your different servers, you install the software as needed, you install the load balancers that we provide. Our enterprise load balancer is top notch and helps us you know, create a really stable, secure system for you. But at the end of the day, the beauty is that it doesn't matter for you, the developer, if it's four data centers across the country, across the globe, or if it's one server in your garage. The entire API operates the same way. Your code doesn't have to change because we've abstracted that layer out. Okay. If you're Zynga, your code already takes care of you know, databases that are persisted databases and various different servers that are across regions. You already are going to write that code anyway. But we're just talking about a communications layer inserted between your clients and your servers to enable you to build an entirely new class of applications really easily. Okay. The power is that you don't have to worry about scalability of our software. It just works. Got it. And yeah. you can put it on one server or 50 servers or 1,000 servers, whatever. Doesn't make a difference. And it scales that way. Yep. So on the client side, when I'm writing my code for mm -hmm. my iPhone app yep. that needs to have these cool real-time features, yep. what do I need to change in my code 
right. to make use of this new real-time system. Right, so everything is JavaScript based. Uh, so basically the code that you write now is gonna be in JavaScript on client side and server side. And that has a lot of power to it because what you're doing now is, is calling JavaScript functions that are on the server from the client. And on the server, you're calling JavaScript functions that are on the client from the server. So this cross-directional, uh, bi-directional calling of functions, setting of variables, and basically managing data and passaging, passing messages, um, that's how you achieve this real-time communication all in JavaScript. Okay. Yep. So architecturally, I don't need to change too much about what I'm doing? You don't. You don't. Okay. Um, you might have to change some of your client-side code. If, if you're an existing application, it is possible you'll have to change some of your client-side code okay. if you want to port from your existing code to Now.js-based code. Um, but if you're starting from scratch, it's easy. And if you have an existing application, but you want to add features to it, let's say you're a Rails stack. You're a Rails large scale, like Rails app serving a few hundred thousand concurrent users, yeah. which would be a very large application. You could easily insert a Now.js powered feature on there. Let's say you're, you're an application that does something, but now you want a chat feature so that the customers that visit your website can chat with other customers or chat with you or something like that. It's trivial to build something like that using Now.js technology. Our servers, our Now.js servers, would run separately from your existing servers, from your databases. We just run separately. Well, let's do something fun. Stuff. Let's build Angry Birds. Ah. So, <laughs> so how would we uh, build Angry Birds that maybe yeah. uses, lets me and uh, Rocky play Angry Birds right together and see real-time well, messages going back and forth? we could. So, so it's actually surprisingly easy. Um, the hardest part, if you wanted to build Angry Birds, is building the game mechanics. And, and a, a company like Rovio is going to be doing the game mechanics anyway. But let's say you wanted to power um, a multiplayer Angry Birds. Okay. That just became extremely easy. Um, so how do we do that? What, what, yeah. what does that look like? And, and as a yep. developer, you already have an idea of what Angry Birds is. What, yep. uh, how do you add these new real-time components into it? Yeah, so, so basically the, the change now, um, with, with the existing Angry Birds, you're already going to have client-side code that deals with various different things. So you're going to have physics, you're going to have game mechanics for you know counters when when you hit uh, you know one of the one of the ice blocks and you get a few more points. You're going to have all of that existing technology already. What we would add to that is a server architecture that would put, for example, two clients, um, two people that connect your website into a room. These two people are going to play against each other. They would play Angry Birds against each other, mm -hmm. and all that happens is on the client side, the code's for the most part the same for the most part. But now, every time they do something, they're going to affect other players. Mm. So your server-side architecture is now very simple. When the client does something, let's say the two of us are playing against each other. If I launch a, a bird and it hits something of yours, I would notify the server based on my, my client-side uh, code, would notify the server telling them, I just launched a bird. This is its trajectory. Yeah. The server would do authentication, make sure we're not a malicious client. It would check with you. It would notify you, the other client, that certain changes are occurring. And that shows up visually on your end because most of the game mechanics code really doesn't change. It's just that the, the updating. It's the it's server telling you, hey, things are changing. Yeah. Server calling your functions on your browser, your iPhone, whatever it is, your iPad. Um, and just telling you, hey, there's a bird coming your way. And then your physics engine in your browser will calculate the bouncing. You know, you'll, you'll see the various different game mechanics going on. Yeah. So it's actually really straightforward. And uh, we'll have a bit, of, a bit of a demo to show you in a bit. Very cool. And, and in code, what does that look like? Take me through maybe a little it's, bit. Because it's, it's very, like five lines of code, 10 lines of code? Very it might not be as little as 10, uh, but it's very simple. Um, okay. on, on the server, you'll have a few functions of basically uh, a client telling the server, uh, notify the other client in my room, blank just happened. Um, it, it's usually, for the most part, it's, it's going to be one. The majority of the data is going to be in one function. On the server side, you're going to have a function that's basically uh, that a client can call yeah. and tell the other client in their room that a bird or object has just been released with a certain velocity and a certain angle. Right. And, and that's basically it. That, that function will then call you, the other client, and tell you that a bird is going at that trajectory and that velocity. And, and that's basically it. There are a few other helper functions and small things, um, not really Node.js based, but really a few small things like make sure that I'm actually connected to the server. 
um, to initialize a server. There, there are a few other lines of code, but it's really just that straightforward. And there's lots of examples on your website. And, and Plenty of examples. Like uh, there, our open source uh, free version now has a bunch of examples. Um, Hello World is a chat application for us, um, a, a real-time chat. You can open it up on mobile browsers, on, on a variety of different systems, and just see how you can chat with each other and various examples like now, that. Now, let's say Apple or Twitter or yep. Facebook builds our app into the system and we get millions of users. Mm -hmm. what, does you, what does now Cluster do yeah. to scale out? Or do I have to be sitting in there and watching Let and going, me, oh shit, we're out of server space. Yeah. And we're at, we need more servers, we need more uh, yep. nodes. Yep. Can it programmatically start up nodes and so, spread itself yeah, out? Yeah, um, we have some pretty cool technology uh, around that. And let me draw it out and explain it a little better. Uh, basically, a lot of your code is just going to stay the same. Yeah. Um, you have, if this is your, this is going to be your client side technology. Yeah. And this is now going to be your server side technology. Yeah. And this right here is what I drew earlier. This is the Now.js technology right yeah. here. So. You write sideways pretty well. <laughs> this is now JS. You're going to have your existing server technology here. Yeah. Your databases, your existing application servers, and whatever else you need in here. Okay. Your client, whatever goes on here, you're going to have a little bit of now JS here as well. Yeah. The beauty of it is as you scale, even if you're not scaling, if you're in development mode, now JS is just it's this box. It's this API you keep sending stuff to. It doesn't matter what it is. But Now.js can be two different things. It can be Now, which is a free product. This product is open source, readily available. It's fairly stable now. It's still an early, early version. Um, but Now scales up to 10,000 concurrent users. And 10,000 concurrent users for free is a significant amount of people. Um, you're, we're talking about a, a fairly serious application. Yeah, but that was the first day of Instagram, right? <laughs> that was. That was. Uh, I'm certain more than just 10,000 concurrent users. Yeah. So let's say you start scaling a little bit. You need now Cluster. And now Cluster is an enterprise technology, and it's very complicated. And we're still in the early versions of, of building this technology. It's going to be a long time before, before it's perfected. But okay. now, now Cluster operates very similar um, similarly to, to now. Now cluster and now, it doesn't matter what's in here. Yep. It operates the same way. You don't change your code. It's just one day you realize, hey, I'm hitting my limits. One of our early startup customers is actually hitting those limits right now, so we're migrating them over to now cluster. And it's a very simple process of call us on the phone, say, hey, we need now cluster, and you just migrate I, over. I'm wondering, though, what now cluster does, because underneath yes. are yes. all these Linux servers, and now it needs exactly. more resources. Exactly. Can it talk to Rackspace Cloud? Can it talk to yep. Amazon yep. and say, hey, I need 20 more servers, or I need 1,000 more servers, whatever the case yeah, may be? So, yeah, so we have side technology over here okay. uh, that are basically managers. Um, th this will manage now cluster and say, it will either notify you by email or text or whatever, hey, your servers are hitting these various thresholds of memory limits or CPU limits, you're starting to have various issues. It's not gonna be as low level as your hard drive just failed because existing infrastructure has, like for example, Rackspace, you guys have that kind of technology to tell you. We, we're, we're operating at a higher level. We use these Linux boxes to, to tell you what's going on. Yeah. So this manager will allow you to either, will either notify you or it'll actually tell you, hey, we're gonna queue up a few different things. We'll plug into the APIs that um, either Linux boxes or you know, various providers like AWS and Rackspace provide to fire up automatically additional clusters so that you can stay up. Got it. Now cluster is, is very interesting. It's a complicated technology that's basically made up of, let's say, these five boxes. They could be five, they could be two, they could be a thousand or ten thousand, doesn't matter. These are all now. Okay. So it's just a bunch of now running together in a cluster. And to the end to the end developer, it doesn't matter what it is, but it's just a bunch of now running together. Yeah. The beautiful thing though is that as a as a client connects to your server, it's gonna then connect to now cluster. It's gonna connect to one of these boxes. Each one of these boxes is a Linux box, you know, on Rackspace, just one box but you're gonna have so many of them, each one of them is responsible for a subset of these clients. 
And they've all got to be talking to each other in a very intelligent, reliable, low latency way. And, and that's what now cluster manages. We have this enterprise level load balancer that basically uh, manages spreads everything, out spreads that. everything out. It detects if a server's gone down, clients on there are migrated to a new server, everything just starts rolling back up, things are constantly staying up. Uptime's a very important thing in, in a case like this. And then we have various things um, such as we use Redis for persistence, uh, we manage all the socket connections between all the different servers. As servers get fired up, as servers get taken down, clients are migrated. Uh, one of the functionalities I, I haven't talked too much, uh, much um, is, is the room functionality. Um, you can create rooms by using this thing, by using groups. Um, Now.js groups uh, will be intelligent in now cluster such that uh, people that are in a group, for example, you and me playing Angry Birds multiplayer, we're going to be in one of these servers to minimize all the issues. And, and let's say I first connected to server one, and you first connected to server seven or eight or whatever it is, you will get migrated over to one server so that we're, we're together, minimizing everything like that. Got it. All these complicated things, I could list 10,000 more complicated things that are going to happen inside now cluster, but it's all abstracted away. There's very little overhead. Everything just works the way it should work. Which makes my client building a great iPhone app exactly. and an Android app really easy because I don't have to worry about that. Your service, you, you have your traditional server-side technology, you have your traditional client-side technology, you insert us into the middle to make your lives easier. Yeah. Very cool. Yep. Um, what else do I need to know about it, I guess, as a developer? Well, as a developer, um, now is, is readily available. Uh, you can That's go to our free. website, it's, it's completely free. It, and you can load it on your own server, you can put it on your yep. Mac at work or whatever. You can run it on your Mac, you can run it on uh, Amazon or Rackspace server, you can run it anywhere you want. Okay. Um, or on a Linux server. On a li any Linux server. Um, we are based on top of Node.js, uh, which I'm sure a lot of you know. It's a very hot and upcoming server-side technology that's based in JavaScript. And we use a variety of open source technology like Socket.io to really power what we're doing here. Um, and, and all this technology is, is free for you to use. And once you scale past 10,000 concurrent users, that's when you start talking to us about now cluster. And my email is, is readily available. Just shoot us an email if you, if you start hitting these. Now the old list, if, if I'm an enterprise, I probably have lots of apps that have been built on the older technology, whether it's Ajax or maybe SOAP, but you know. Old, old technology. That's old stuff. That's like before I worked at Microsoft. <laughs> but Ajax is pretty, pretty modern, Jason mm -hmm. is pretty modern. Mm -hmm. Can these technologies talk to now cluster at all? If you wanted, you could. Okay. Um, you, you could strip out a lot of your existing application to start talking to Now.js servers. Um, a lot of HTTP requests going back and forth between your existing servers and our new servers. And then we would manage that and, and do all the transfer. Um, but ideally, you, you build these applications where Now.js manages the communication. You could add this extra layer of complexity. Um, okay. we're, we're that flexible. Um, I'm just thinking you, you if can, you had an app that was already yep, built, that yep. already is exposing itself through these APIs. Yep. Could it you, is possible. Okay. It is. Um, do, do, do. How much does a now, now cluster work? Uh, yeah. It's a scalable pricing. So as it, it is a scalable users, pricing. So it, it, depends on, it depends on the size of, okay. of load you expect to handle. And um, we're, we're very affordable for startups uh, because we're not here to, we know that, that funding is, is very crucial. Yeah. The amount of money you have is very crucial. So we want to, the, the, the cheaper stuff, uh, if you're only around the, the 10,000, 20,000 concurrent user limit, it's very cheap. Um, it, once you start scaling past 100,000 concurrent users, once you're in the million concurrent users bracket, then we're talking slightly larger amounts, uh, but we don't disclose prizes publicly. Okay, so I call you up on the phone and uh, call us start up. negotiating. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> where should I learn, uh, where do I learn more about it? Yeah, so you can go to nowgs.org and you'll find out a lot more about our um, open source technology. And if you go to flowtype.com, you'll find out a lot about the company, our enterprise software, um, our investors, our personal information, and everything you'd ever possibly want to know. And that's F-L-O-T-Y-P-E dot com. Flowtype. Very cool. There's no W. Are you guys on Twitter and Facebook? We are. We are. Um, we're on Twitter at Flowtype as okay. well as at NowJS Team. Okay. Um, and you can find us on there, find us on our email, and get in touch with us. Very cool, and how about you personally? Are you on Twitter? Yes, I am. Uh, I'm Darshan uh, Shankar, so that's at D Shankar. That's uh, D-S-H-A-N-K-A-R. 
Turns out I can still spell my name. Very cool. Yep. Thank you so much for uh, showing me this, and uh, it's looking really good. And, Thank uh, you, Robert. Hopefully we have lots of these running on Rackspace soon. Hopefully. Hopefully.